Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Here we are, part eight of this uh, Daswork U-Boat U9, uh, the brand new kit from Dasworks in 170 second scale. And as we can see, we've got our model here and we're nearly there, we're getting there. Uh, next thing I need to be doing is fitting in these um, little ports in here and then fitting in the bits and pieces on the outside. And also, I think I'm gonna have to weather up the exhaust and everything before I put it in. So we'll be looking at that in this video as well. Um, conning tower fits on beautifully. I've gone over with some Mr. Surfacer over those joints and we can see they're lovely. And also I've gone over the uh, riveting with some Mr. Surfacer so we can see that now close up. And I'm happy that's come out. Unfortunately these rivets are slightly smaller than the Dasworks moulded on ones. But remember this is all going to be dark grey. Um, it's a very very dark colour. Where is it now? It's LP13. So it's going to be this very dark grey colour. You know, once it's had a, a few washes and some rust and some, you know, beating about a bit, I don't think it's going to notice too much. This side isn't quite as nice. Um, you can see the couple of rivets are a bit softer there. And we can also just see a line, I don't know if you can see it, just here between the two lots of rivets, we can see a line where the decal is. But um, again, you know, we're, we're going to be rust streaking and all sorts. And where there is a decal, line, I'll just put a streak there to hide it. As I say, I showed you in the last video... Um, how I would go about cutting, not not cutting, but um, scoring, bending and then sanding the hull um, and it would look a lot better. Uh, if anybody wants to send me their hull, they can and I'll do it for them. <laughs> one person. Um, I'm joking. Uh, if I ever get another one of these, I will show you how to do it. Um, and then I'm sure that will look a million times better than what I've got here. This isn't very... Uh, very tidy at all really but for what it is <clears throat> I think it's absolutely fine so uh, there we go so that's all done that's had Mr Surfacer on it <clears throat> dry throat again because I turned the camera on so now we need to start looking at um, how we're going to get all this done on the top the other thing I need to consider I think I mentioned before I managed to snap one of these off um, where is it where was it I snapped one off here I snapped that one off so I need to put some tubing in there or something or just drill a hole um, I was going to see if I could actually um, fit the, 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 the lines before I fit the deck. And I'm kind of wondering if I might do what Andy did at Andy's Abbey headquarters and actually fit the deck after everything else. Because it is a very, very good fit, as you can see. Because I've pulled it all together now and glued it, it is an extremely good fit all the way around. Um, and doesn't really need to be glued, to be honest. And I'm kind of wondering if... I can do that if I can get away with fitting all this on, doing all the rigging and everything, because these things here, if you look, they are, I mentioned this before, but they're, they're a sort of like a one millimetre diameter peg sticking out of the hull with a flat on there. So quite how you're supposed to glue the easy line or whatever onto that to represent the, um, the, uh, the turnbuckles and, and stuff, the protection for the diving planes, I don't know. So... That's something else I need to look at and think about, you know, along with a million other things. But um, I think what we need to do now is start looking at getting the, uh, the exhaust and everything done so we can get the deck all built up. I've recently watched um, Jason's latest video, part four, on his um, U9 build. And he's raised the fact that I said in one of my videos that I would advise not shaking Mr. Surfacer because it ends up all getting all gunged up around the top. And um, I never shake it, I just stir it. Um, and he did mention about you know the, the fact that it does separate and you can see here we've got a very thin layer of oil on the top or whatever it is and then we've got the paint down the bottom so I just stir it um, I do have a badger paint mixer but uh, I won't use it in this I'll just uh, use the, the back end of the brush and there we go that's that all stirred up so get all of that off of the brush like so and then we're ready to go if you notice I'm using black the only reason I'm using black is so that I don't have to paint it black after I've done this. And this is going to add some corrosion. Now, we need to think about the corrosion. I've got a very itchy nose today. Um, the, the, the straps, I don't think, would have corroded. We need to think about how much we're going to weather this and how weathered and beat up it's going to be. Uh, my intention is to make it look like it's sort of had a few weeks. You know, so it's going to have some rust on it. It's going to have some panel damage it's going to have well, canning um it's going to have some streaks and scrapes and stripes and blah 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 so it's not going to be too bad so 
this as far as I'm concerned this whole pipe wouldn't have rusted it won't have rusted around the brackets because they would have kept it cooler and obviously now you've got the top end here that wouldn't be as hot as the bottom end because as the exhaust gases travel out they would cool but you'd have water splashing here so you wouldn't get so much rust there from the heating and the burnt off paint but you would get rust there and some streaking from the water splashing whereas up here you would just get the, the rust streaks from the from the um from the burnt off paint and then when it's down and under water obviously it's going to get wet so we have to be a little bit sort of conscious of, of what we're doing here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a bit of texture and then I'm going to use pigments to get the rust colour and for those of you that haven't seen pigments you'll enjoy that now this is all fairly new to me I don't get into weathering big time as I'm sure you know um, let me just get something to protect my modelling board because I don't want to get paint on it so what I'm going to do is use this to sort of stipple on a kind of texture. Now the reason I'm using this one, one A because it's black, uh, so I don't have to paint it black. And the other reason is it's thin, it's, um, it's 1500 I think. Yeah it's 1500 so it'll take a little bit longer to dry. So we can work it a bit more. And you can see that I showed you how to do the casting with a stippling motion of a brush and you can also do rust effects with a stippling motion and if you look here in fact what I'll do is I'll zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing here we go let's zoom you right in there we go that's as far as I can go I can move the camera down a bit a bit actually right so if I stay here on the piece of paper then you can see what I'm doing and I'm just stippling this on somebody's just texting me I'm just stippling this on to give a bit of a rough finish that's so that when we actually look at the, because remember this was cast by the look of it. Um, Dave Whitaker has been sending me a lot of information. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, he's been doing a lot of research and passing on what he's finding. And um, he was saying it looks like this was cast. So there we go. And then down here, I've seen a photograph and it was kind of, Like this sort of thing. And he was saying that he saw one of the photographs, he saw one of the videos he'd seen that the actual, you could see where the pipe were broken off, it looked like it was cast and not uh, not rolled sheet, which makes sense for this, this, uh, this day and age. I mean, you think these days when this was built, you know, all the gutters on houses were, were cast, weren't they? They were like cast steel cast iron so um I think this is uh, the way to go so under here is just I'm going to leave the side kind of because it's getting cooled by the water splashing over it but it's not getting anything beating all over it so it's kind of a bit weird and when it goes down that's going to be sat in water all the time and I don't know, it's kind of difficult. I don't know where we're going to go with this really, but uh, at the end of the day, I can always just take it off with some uh, leveling thinners and start again. So there we are. So that's our black rough surface. It is very slightly rough. Okay, you can see that there, it's slightly roughened up. And then when we put the, the rust on, oh dear, I shouldn't have got it on there, should I? When we put the rust on, then, um, in fact, I'll put some rust on that one as well, won't I? Yeah. Um, when we put the rust on, then we will see um, see how it looks. Okay, I've got some uh, MIG pigments here. And this is um, PO25 standard rust and PO24 light rust. So we're going to just put some rust on here and see how it looks. And then we can play with it afterwards. So I'm going to go with the dark rust first. This is the same brush that had the Mr. Surfacer on it. So I could just use this just to stipple this on. Okay, and now we're, this is going to go on very lightly. The, the paint's still very, very slightly tacky, but not at all, sort of. 
wet so it's not the, the it's not sticking to the paint if you know what I mean I think I'm gonna to have to repaint this tube or I might just give it a wash with some um, leveling thinners and that'll take off the black So I brush this in and I'm being careful. I don't want to get it on the brackets. I want the paint to be sort of because those brackets would act like a heat sink. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. I get some of the lighter rust on here. I'm just going to build that up like so. And notice I'm doing it over a tray and then I can put anything I want to I can put back in. I'm thinking the, the bottom part here would be particularly rusty because it would get hot. It's not directly being hit by the water, but it's going to be constantly wet and going to rust, isn't it? We'll do the same up here. Settle that in there like so. Okay, so that's our initial. That's our initial attempt at making this look rusty. Okay, so you can see on there now we've got the the black got the black under the red now remember if this was rust like on a tank exhaust or something I would also be adding white I'll show you what I mean I've got a, got a white one here now you can just take a touch of white Put that in and straight away you can see what I mean it's sort of making it look like it's getting it's blotchy so it's making it look like patches now the thing is this wouldn't necessarily look like this in real life because it's going to be wet and very scaly and stuff but you can see that the effect you can get here by using the white Kind of makes it look, yeah. All right, and the other thing you can do is orange. If you've got some orange paint, especially the Tamiya Clear Orange, just give that a light coat of that afterwards. It really does, really does help it. Uh, what other colours have I got in here? I've got some earth, I've got some city dirt, and I've got some black smoke. Let's, let's get a bit of black on there, just a little bit. And then I'm going to fix it. So just going to spread this out a bit. And if you haven't used pigments before, go and get some, they're brilliant. You can really, really work with them and so what I'm trying to do here is spread this about and get it a dark sort of rusty black blotchy colour because I think because it's constantly wet that's how it would look. Like I say, around those brackets, I don't think it would be too uh, too discoloured at all, really. Mm. 
and this is just a base for future future playing if you like and then the bits we got left in here we could just pick up and use again I'm just going to give this intake pipe some discoloration because it's because the whole thing, the whole model is going to get some discoloration. Let's face it. There we go. You can wipe the pigments off of those brackets, just like so. And now we're going to work on the top. Bearing in mind there's nothing here sticking this down, this is just basically dust. Now if you want to do your exhaust with matte black, we often use black paint, watch this. This will give you the most realistic sooty black exhaust you could ever wish for. And I've just realised what I've done. I've done the intake haven't I? All the talk about which is which. I've done the intake. What a complete and utter idiot. <laughs> so let's do the exhaust. <laughs> oh god. Okay guys, so just got some uh just to kind of leveling thinner is on a cotton bird, gone round it, taken all the um the black off of there, removed all the pigments. So there we go, let that dry now, give that a clean up. And we can start again. I'll spray it grey and we can start again. Um <laughs> I may end up having to stipple the whole thing now because I made a bit of a mess, but that's, I may give it a light stipple anyway because now I know that they're cast, um, they, would, they wouldn't have been perfectly smooth I don't think, but um, I'm guessing it's 70 second scale, the sort of casting they would have been, you know, much like your old cast drain pipes and stuff, they wouldn't, it wouldn't show in this scale, so we shall see. But I was showing you that with the, um, the intakes, you can put that black soot in there and it gives you a really, really nice um, black colour. So, and it's very, very matte and it's very, very dense and it's, uh, it's, it's really ideal. So there we go. I am officially an idiot. And there we go. Three steps forward, four steps back. So uh, it's all painted again. Not really worried about the exhaust, it's the intake I'm worried about. I think it's got quite a sort of nice patina about it now. We can see we've got bits of fluff on there from the uh, cotton bud, but once the paint's dry, I'll get all that off. But, um, yeah, what a complete and utter knob. Okay, so moving forward, we've got the conning tower here. And kind of looking at the way things are, um, and as I say, I'm getting lots of emails sent to me about, about this. And... Uh, Dave Whitaker has sent me a lot and he's actually watching all the email, all the videos and then sending me snippets of them, which is really good. Thank you, mate. Um, I think we're coming to the conclusion that these two here, these two forward ones, are nav lights. Um, the holes that are in there from Dasworks look to be wrong. It looks like they're, they're that way because of the moulding. They should be sort of that way. So they need perhaps elongating and a bit of filling or whatever. But it looks like they're nav lights. There is a video where a diver sort of goes down and he's looking here, it looks like there is like a, a spherical bulb in there or something. Um, and I'm also wondering if this was the conning tower area here, did the men have access to get around to here? Because we got that, we know we've got that tube here around the uh, periscope and everything. So did they have access to get around there? Could they get around this far? I'm not sure. So I'm wondering if there are nav lights and these are lookout ports. Now, I've actually written to Dasworks, or emailed Dasworks, and asked them, are these supposed to be holes? Were you going to make clear parts and they decided not to? So, is there a clear viewing port in behind there, or should that be drilled right through and that be clear all the way through? Um, I think what I'm going to do at the end of the day anyway is put a disc in there of plastic card to fill that hole up. Give it a good thick coat of gloss black paint and see how it looks and if we need more gloss on there I'll just put a drop of um, crystal clear or something in there but I don't want to go fill in that whole area with crystal clear because it will as I said before it will go concave and it'll look awful the other thing is I've got a um, a box here this is my I've got a drawer here with lots of different pieces of from other kits clear parts 
I mean, there's an idea we could use perhaps a piece of clear sprue. I've got a piece here, and I wonder if we could kind of file and sand that into the right shape so it goes in, and then cut bits of it off, and that will give us our clear, clear glazing. We shall have to see. Um, as they say, horrible for cats, but there, there is more than one way to skin a cat. But I, I definitely want to put something in there. I don't want this just left like that. It looks bloody awful. I think. Um, I want to see some. I want to see some glazing in there, but I'm pretty sure they are nav lights. So, the um, the later U boats, the Type Sevens, and that they have them, and they're like that. They're they're covered over, so they can't be seen from above. And uh, the more I think about it, and the more Dave sends me, I'm becoming convinced they are lights, um, and they are. I'm not sure they're called nav lights or whatever they're called, but um, I'm sure that's what they are. So. Thinking out loud, and we're going to have to start pressing on with something else because I can't do the exhaust now. I can get these bits glued up and get them glued into the deck, I suppose. Right, pressing on. Um, torpedo doors, and these panels here, when they fit onto the deck, they are actually they have a. Um, this is all one piece, going across the top. So we need to fill and sand and get all that lovely joint there, so it looks like one piece. Now I'm going to attempt to fit these to the deck and then remove the deck. As I say, I'm going to try and leave the deck off so I can put all this rigging through here uh, without having it all glued separately into each one. I'm going to draw through those and actually put the um, the lines through. So um, these doors, they're a bit weird. Um, the long prong goes at the top. So you obviously got this, this slant angle here on the front. But they, they go when they go in they're a bit weird it seems like you've got it all wrong if you look at that how that fits in there you get those two legs to start to go in and it kind of looks wrong but then when you drop it down in it just slots back in easy so it's a little bit strange I'm just gonna put a drop of glue in each of these legs and hopefully that'll be enough just to hold them in place um, as you can see once again we put those legs in and it kind of looks it all looks wrong and then it just falls into place it's ever so strange so we'll uh, just a couple of drops of glue on them that should be enough to hold them in and what I'm trying to do is clear the sprues I've managed to get the box out of the way and now we've just got left a few bits in a bag so let's see if we can get this on I'm noticing we've got a bit of flash in these holes here so I'm just gonna get in with my where is my pointed knife there it is. So we'll just get that out of there. I don't know what these are like, if these are the same. Well, they're better, those. So I'm just going to now, where I've cleaned that flash out, just go in with the liquid glue and just clean up. It just ensures you've got a nice clean edge then. So now we're going to glue this on here. Now hopefully I can get this in here. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on. And the same on the other side and then hopefully I can remove the deck. Like this. Squeeze and hopefully I can remove the deck and they'll stay on the deck and that way I can work on that seam and get a nice tight fitting joint so we'll give that a few minutes to dry and then we'll see how it comes out okay so we'll give it a go uh, and it comes up look at that lovely and we can put that back in so now we can work on that joint the other thing I've noticed is when they molded the grooves in the deck they're wider than the actual grooves in the parts so we need to get in there with a saw and match them up because they are supposed to be like all one piece in real life so we'll file the ends as well we'll get everything to fit nicely so they look like they really are and that's just one piece dropped on I'm not sure what they are if they're sort of access hatches for something or I don't know they kind of look thicker than everything else don't they so I'm not sure um, so there we are that's that done so we've got the torpedo doors in we've got those in our decks sort of fitted in um, we need to start looking through the instructions of what else we could do. I guess we could start building up the... Oh no, we can't start building up the dive planes because they're one piece. We do need to get a nice gloss coat on them, but I don't want to do that now because I don't want the windows open. 
So um, I'm going to have to put this to one side. Oh no, we can do these. We can do these bits that go in the deck. These here. So we got C five, two, and six. So here's our C sprue. So we've got five, two, and six. Five, two, and six. Five, two, and six. Yes. Yeah, so we'll get them off. And we've got two sixes. Two fives, that was going to roll on the floor. Two fives. And two twos. God only knows what these things are. But, uh, I think uh, do, uh, Matt, Matt McDougall called them um, sausage lockers, I think. But that's just him all over, isn't it? Because that's what he's like. So that's going to go in there like that. OK, I'm not going to worry about spraying it, spraying it black first because it's very dark down in there anyway. So that's going to go in like that. And that was my chair squeaking, not my bottom. Let's just centralise that. And then that's going to go on top of there. Like so. Quite why that needs to be orientated with a key, I know I should never know, but never mind. Which makes me laugh. You get some manufacturers don't bother with any location or anything, and other people like like this. You know, you've got a, a, a fart there which is sort of has no features. It doesn't need orientating, but they put a, a tab there just to make sure you get it in the right orientation. Okay. Uh, so this one's going to go in here, wrong way round, it's going to go like that, a couple of drops of glue either side, that's going to go in there like so, again a couple of drops of glue either side, job done, and as you can see it's dark in a way so it doesn't need pre-painting. And then these are going to glue into the bottom of the deck. In here. So yeah, they've always... <laughs> oh God. This is the engineering side of things for you. They've orientated those to go into here, even though it doesn't matter which way they go. But then they haven't given any location there going into the deck. So I can put that in there. And I can have that anywhere. Now I don't know if that's supposed to be like that, like that, like that, or like that. Now looking in the instructions, it looks like that is aft. So that's going to be so that's going to be facing backwards. So it's straight across, but behind satellite. So you've got that dumbbell thing in there which is up in there okay so it's it's aft of center it goes in and diagonally across all right now that's a lovely fit in there so a couple of drops of glue in there give it a little squeeze check it's all good there we go here we are we haven't got any big lumps on that one, nope. And this one is the same, it's aft as well by the look of it. So that way round, like that. But you see, understand what I'm saying, they've given us orientation there. You've got a location key to locate that into there, but then there's nothing to locate this into the deck to make sure you get the orientation of that little bit right. So, nil point for that one. go that's in there like so nice and central get a nice gap all the way around so they're in job done so that's that that's step five taken care of then we've done those we've done all this we're not bothering with that 
We're not going to put these in yet because they might get broken. We could put the back of the, um, we could fit the stern torpedo tubes in. So we'll get that one off of there. As I say, guys, this, this thing is newly done. Just clean those nibs off. There's a little bit of flash going around the edge of there. That can be cleaned off afterwards. So we'll take our hull and it goes with the doors upwards. So that's going to fit in. That's a lovely fit in there. That is a lovely fit. Now I'm just going to sand the end flat. If you notice I'm going in one direction and that helps you get things flat. If you start giving it this you tend to, to rock. If you start doing this you tend to rock so just go in one direction and it sort of aids you in getting things flatter and the radar, radar the door hinge has got the top. There we go it fits lovely now. So run some glue around there that should weld that in place that's that one in and as I say we're not going to put the uh, propellers or shafts in because the um, because of the risk of damage and they just tap them on the bench and it'll snap them off um, same with all these fins and deck details and everything. We'll do all this afterwards. So, uh, like, we're not going to call it a day for part eight, but I'm going to um, stop there and then I'll come back tomorrow when we can do this exhaust the right way round because I'm such an idiot. So that's not dry yet, but um, it'll be ready by tomorrow and we'll get it done then. Right then, guys, here we are back with a different board. It's a scruffy board, so I don't mind if I get any pigments all over it. And... Um, this is what I first started with actually. This is my original board I used to do modelling on um, when I first started the channel. So here we've got our black smoke, ashes white, light rust and standard rust. And I've also got this one. I forgot I had gunmetal. And I just want to quickly show you something guys with this one. Um, this pigment is amazing for doing um, tank sprockets. So I'm going to brush that pigment on there. You can see that was like a matte, a matte sandy colour. Now we just put that pigment, the excess back in the pot. Put that over there. So we've got that on there now and you can see that is on there. Okay, and you've got this real metallic look to it. So if you want to achieve on your model a sort of sandblasted, worn out look. And this is the one to go for because you can brush this on to matte paint and it will pick up. And also if you've got it on, if you've got your tank wheels, you've got your sprockets, just dip your finger in and rub it around the edge of the sprocket. It kind of um, it polishes up the ends of the teeth as they would be in real life, even if it was, you know, once rusty and in use. And you could keep brushing and keep brushing. And look at that. You won't achieve that with... Uh, with paints. See that sort of real worn, you know, if you wanted to achieve a, a worn tread plate or something, you know, you can imagine that is going to give you, I mean, even on the grey plastic here, like up here, you can see that I can even get a, a worn finish on that. So uh, yeah, little little helpful one for you there, guys. Absolutely amazing. So what I'm going to do with this, I am going to put some in areas and around here and then brush it out just to give it a kind of metallic look under the under the rust You can see even on my modeling board there it's got a metallic finish now. I'm not going to go to time with this I don't want it too much and I doubt you can even see it but I just want it to have a bit of a, 
a kind of a bit of a metallic look. And it's nice to see that now we're doing the correct one. I may as well take that toothpick out there, haven't I? And you can see that I've masked up this time the um, the intake pipe, which is the one that I did last time. Okay, and then if you rub your finger over there, you can get it polished. That's another thing I can show you on here. If you put some on here, and then rub your finger. Bear in mind this is bare plastic. Look at that. You can see the reflection of my light in there, look. Yeah. And I could do the same on here. Put some on here. Look at that. Proper cast, worn off, sandblasted, or whatever. Look. This guy's the limit with this one, guys. And that is um, MIG Pigments P231. I'm not even sure if you can still get this stuff. P231 Gunmel. It's uh, such a fantastic, um, such a fantastic tool to have in your arsenal. It's brilliant stuff. I don't know why I haven't used it before or more. All I've ever used it for is tank drags, really. But uh, there you go. Look at that. Hmm. Right, so that's our metallic bit done. Just clean my finger off. My jeans are covered in pigments. That is the problem with this stuff, guys. It is very messy. It gets everywhere. So... I get some of my standard rust now, and I don't worry about mixing it and stuff. If people want to complain, I don't worry about mixing it in the pots and stuff. I really don't care because it's all, it's not a colour coded sort of fixed colour item. It's just a, it's just a pigment which is an aid. You need to also be a little bit careful. Some of the pigments, I'm not going to mention any names, but some of the pigments that are about are a lot coarser than this. Now I've used. I've used some of the florally ones and they're good. They've been quite good, to be fair to Phil. Um, the, there are some others though that are, they're very, very grainy. Put it this way, instead of being a fine pigment that just breaks down like this into a, into a, almost a, a sort of powdery stain, um, they kind of, they just want to sit on the surface, almost like, uh, to exaggerate it, almost like sand. So there we go. I can rub these brackets with my finger, which has got the gun metal on. And I'm also rubbing all that pigment off then. <laughs> It's clever. Okay, so what we can do now get some on there. So what I'm going to do now is is fix this with what they call pigment fixer, and I think, to be honest, I think this is just really, I think it's just enamel thinners. Um, it has a flat finish to it. Just dab it on. You don't brush it on. If you brush it on, you'll lose your your pigments. But that will work on there now. That will soak in. Okay. 
you can see that's worked its way around there now. So we'll just leave that to dry. What you can do is then is pick up some more pigments if you want to and dab them on. Like that. So we can take some more. Of the standard rust colour and just dab it on. And don't worry guys when it dries back it's a lot more subtle than it looks here. Just like so. And we're starting to see a nice rusty pipe and I'm going to get a cotton bud and again I'm going to wipe over these brackets and I'm just going to dab some of the excess off where it's a bit too wet I'll have to um, do some weathering and show you how I use these to do weathering because achieving the rust look I don't think is anything like doing the weathering. With the pigment fixer you might sort of build up a pile of dust in a corner of a tank or something, a derelict tank, and then just dab the fixer in and it soaks into it and it holds it in place. So we'll let that dry and that gives us a base to work upon then. So while that's drying, let's have a look at some questions and answers from part number six. This is eight, isn't it? So look at uh, questions and points raised from part number six. Well, we'll forget that. There aren't any questions. Um, just a few comments, really. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you all very much for your for your comments and for your links you've been sending me for the videos and stuff. Um, it would appear now um, the final sort of nail in the coffin as it were um jason from model kit stuff um linked a video that i'd missed and in there they actually say that the porthole you can see it it's a porthole inside a recess and and it looks like they sort of thin the material down put the porthole in there and then they can actually look out an angle so if they would just had that sort of I don't know what's maybe a sort of four inch diameter viewing port through the thickness of the steel then you'd obviously only have a, a, a very narrow field of vision but if you actually make a slot it also acts I guess as a step as well so um anyway we'll carry on with this so uh that's it um so that was our standard rust this is the light rust now so we'll put some of this on funny you've seen all this before haven't you <laughs> I, would, I was going to edit it out, but I'm not. I'm going to leave it in. So by the time you've listened to me say that, you would have already seen this. So just dab some of this on here. Get a bit of a blotchy, rusty look to it. And there we go. I've got bloody raging toothache, which is really annoying because I can't get to the dentist. So I'm relying on ibuprofen and paracetamol. There we are. Just clean up those bits again. There we go. So there's our light rust gone on. So now you can see we've got a sort of rusty textured kind of look to it. Yeah. Now black smoke. Oh no, we'll go with the white first, I think. Let's do a bit of the uh Let's get a bit of the white ashes on there. That just tends to give it some more contrast, tonality, whatever the word is. There 
we go. And then we get some of the black smoke. And we'll just very sparingly with this one, you need to be very careful because this stuff is so dense. Oh, well, something else I've just thought of. Um, something I forgot to say in my Iowa hole corrections video, if you watch that. Um, if you watched Ozzy Trekkie when he did his initial research, he was on about the hole being too narrow. And that's actually not the case. Um, the hull is fine. The hull is narrow, but when you put the deck in, it pushes it out to the right width. So um, it's something I forgot to say in my video. And I will the next time I do one. But uh, just in case it's quite a while away, and any of you are Iowa fans or whatever, then just to clarify, the, the actual deck width over the main part of the hull on that kit is perfect from the references I've got. And we can really add some sooting up here and get it all black and filthy. And I think this here is probably very simplified as well. I doubt very much if this went into anything like that at all. I would imagine it was um, something more complex than that. And there we go. I'm just going to put some more in there. And there we are. There's our rusty scaly dirty exhaust you can see the texture on there from the mr surfacer hey so um i've rubbed some of the black pigment off there look on my finger that is one of the problems with pigments they rub off really easily so we just put some more on there like so then I can come along, grab a clean brush. I use different brushes for oils. I never use the same brush for enamels or oils that I do with acrylics. Let me just dab this on. fix all that in place And there we go leave that to dry and we're job done okay so here we are back with our normal uh, normal modeling mat and everything so we've got the part done now so we can actually put that in there right way around Nigel like so and that can sit down in there like that and be protected and then we can glue that into the bottom of the deck in like that now you can see that's how it's going to look when it's down. Now I intend to keep this folded up and I have noticed that on the RC subs PE instructions that he's got online you can see he's got a kind of rigging diagram on there which is going to become in handy for us because unfortunately DAS works don't include one. So um, 
So as a reference, he's also got early and late now on the um, RC subs instructions. Now I don't I don't know when the cutoff is with early and late, but um, the only difference is I think is one of the masts that comes out of the conning tower. So from memory, um, so there we are. That's in there now, and then. Well, we need a cocktail stick in there. We can come in here and pick that up like so. And there it is. It'll stay up now. So it feels a bit tighter now. Maybe it's just the paint that's on there. But I have actually, what I did while it was out, I actually, when I drilled these holes, I pushed a cocktail stick in nice and tight and that would have opened up the plastic. So what I might do is actually push the cocktail stick in nice and tight and leave it in there and that gives you that tighter tighter look rather than having it all floppy so there we are that's uh that's that done and taken care of so there we are that can um i'll take that out for now maybe glue that in later so that can be left now for a while and uh I think we'll put these hatches in. We're not going to have them up, looking into a just a bare open shell. So we'll get those hatches in, which are here. C34. They're just plain flat top things. And I've got a feeling these, looking at the wreck photos, there are some hatches there that sort of lead into a another hatch at sort of I don't know, 80 degrees or 75 degrees or whatever and that will be for loading torpedoes so I'm thinking that maybe these are them but I could be wrong it's not um, it's not often but uh, yeah I mean I, could, I probably am wrong it is quite often actually that I'm wrong it takes a man to admit that eh so they say but um yeah there we go so once I've glued these in we'll call that a day for part eight and I'm gonna go and uh, do some shopping I'm gonna try and get something I can put on my tooth to numb it salt water seems to be doing the trick I've just looked on the um, on the NHS health line because obviously you can't see any dentists at the moment because of the the big C um, so yeah, I'm gonna, uh, it looks like you have to try their recommended salt water and stuff for two days before they'll see you. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to lie to them and take the mick. I don't like to do that. There we go. So that's centered up there. That's centred up there, and there we are, job done. So, we can um, call that a done thing. I'll see you all for part nine, guys, where we'll have questions and answers from part seven, the last one. And as I say, just to confirm, it is now case closed. These are all viewing ports, and they're going to be done after all the weathering, all the modelling, everything is done. We're going to put crystal clear in them to um to sort them out in fact we may leave this off and then we can put the crystal clear in from the inside we'll see how it goes but that'll be the very last thing we do because then we don't have to worry about masking and stuff so if you don't know what crystal clear is it's here this is crystal clear it's basically pva i think um but i know it does drive mega drives mega mega clear the only downside with it is in larger areas um it tends to end up with a concave face which doesn't look very accurate but uh with these tiny little things i think it'll be fine so i'll see you for part nine thanks for watching oh we also need to work on these seams as well we're going to um get some mr surfacer on them and we'll it, actually i don't think we're going to need to are we look at that those joints have sanded out beautifully we just need to look at the um 
Oh no, we need some Mr. Servicer in that one. We've got a bit of a joint in that one. So we'll put some Mr. Servicer on them for the next part and we'll, we'll sort that out after it's dry. <sighs> we'll blow that out. And we need to sort out these lines as well, which I'll do with a with a scriber or maybe even just come in with a knife. But we'll do that after we've done the Mr. Servicer. So I'll see you for part nine. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.